Quiet now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast, your weekly animation discussion show. You can find episodes every week on the show's YouTube page, and if you like the show, subscribe and share it with your friends. Because that would be pretty rad. Alrighty, everybody, welcome to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast here on the Ink and Paint Club channel. I am your host, JD. And as always, I am joined by my heterosexual life mate, Kyle. That's an honor. (laughs) (laughs) You should feel so honored. (laughs) Uh, And also joining us tonight is a man we've been wanting to have on the podcast for some time, actually. Uh, So everybody, welcome Dustin to the show. Hello. (laughs) <laughs> Am I doing this right? <laughs> You're doing fine. Sweet. <laughs> oh, I'm very so, nervous. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, man. It, we, this is a safe space. I hope the audience we, is is gentle. I don't want any. I don't audience. want any negative feedback. <laughs> we got like two listeners. It's cool. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And they're very polite people. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, when this show comes out, Mother's Day will have just happened, and I hope all of you out there in listener land did something nice for your moms. Um, if you didn't, shame on you. I'm gonna <laughs> buy my mom a vape. <laughs> a vape? <laughs> or a hoverboard. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Moms like to feel For hovering. <laughs> okay, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> Um, so, in honor of Mother's Day this year, uh, we decided we are going to talk about some of our favorite mom characters in cartoons. Now, these aren't necessarily, like, moms that are good at their mom jobs, but moms that are at least entertaining to watch. (laughs) I thought this was about MILFs. I I mean, if you want it to be, it's not for me. I am on the wrong podcast. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that one's down the hall. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll just kind of, you know, shoot the shit as we do um, and talk about some of our favorite cartoon mom characters. Um, and, Dustin, since you're the guest here, we'll let you talk about your first favorite mom person thing. Oh, geez. The pressure's on. Um, <laughs> okay, well... Um... So I was thinking about it all day yesterday because, like, I, I there's a lot of cartoon moms I like, but I could not pick which one was my absolute favorite one. So after hours, literally hours of thinking about it, um, I think my first favorite is probably Mary from the cartoon show Clarence, Clarence's mom. Yes. I have heard good things about Clarence's mom. Uh, yeah, before we, like we were talking before the show, I've never actually sat down and watched Clarence in any capacity, but I have heard good things. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's it's a good show. She's a good mom. Uh, she, she's a nice character overall. Oh, man, I should have I should have thought about exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, we do everything off the cuff I, here. I just so. like how she's good. not portrayed as a perfect mom. Like, yeah. She's real. Yeah. Exactly. Um, she <laughs> she's real. She's entertain well, not really real. She she acts like a real person. She doesn't exist in reality. Yet. <laughs> if only. <laughs> but um, We haven't invented that technology yet. <laughs> someday. Um but yeah, she has a nice design. She has a a cool funny voice she's a funny character um i'll be honest it's been a while since i've watched clarence actually but um you know when thinking of my favorite one she was the one who kept coming to mind first for my top favorite not a bad choice from what i've been told (laughs) (laughs) i've seen a few episodes it's been such a long time though 
yeah the last um, episode i saw was the tension they kept making the teacher sleep and they stole his toys so oh yeah <laughs> it's it's funny I mean, I, literally, I, yeah i think that was actually the last episode i saw too <laughs> <laughs> I think the last one I watched was the one they went to McDonald's and played in the ball pit. So the Jeez. first one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen like bits and pieces when my fiance watches it, but other than that, I've that's about all I've seen. Of it. Yeah, you see the first one, you've seen them all. There you go. That's all you need. That's how TV works, right? Exactly. Who needs the rest of this series? <laughs> oh, Kyle, why don't you hit us with one of yours? I don't wanna. Do it. <laughs> All right. Do as your master commands. Fine. I'm gonna pick Peg from Goof Troop. Another show I've never watched. Jesus. Every time you talk about the Disney afternoon, it makes me so sad. <laughs> One of these days, you and I will sit down and just watch every Disney afternoon show, and I will be educated. Take like three years to do. <laughs> We got our entire lives ahead of us. Anyway, It'll all be spent watching the Disney afternoon. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then after that, we can play the game, the Disney afternoon, based on the hit TV shows. <laughs> I played Duck. I played the original DuckTales. But have you played Chip and Dale? And, I have a... And Tailspin? And... No. I think that's... Oh, Darkwing Duck, yeah. That's it. No. I anyway. love me some Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck's the best. They just announced the pop <laughs> final. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Peg. Yeah. She she was awesome. She liked Pete. Pete's my favorite Disney villain. And they had... They had two kids. Pete Jr. and Pistol. This is... Who needs their kid Pistol? <laughs> well, they were named after Pete basically Peg this saying. is really embarrassing um i for the longest time did not put it together that pj's name was pete jr <laughs> and as soon as it hit me i was like oh <laughs> well don't i feel peg stupid in, why wasn't peg in the goofy movie kyle they were made at two different times but you can think of divorce <laughs> <laughs> I know you told me a couple weeks ago that like they're not in the same continuity. I just like to ask that question. Are they really yeah. not in the same continuity? I don't think so. I always assume. I just always assume they were. Yeah, and anything I read, it's like it never says anything because their their pets aren't involved. He doesn't have the cat. It's kind of well. In their defense, they never really go to uh, PJ's house. You only ever see PJ like at the school or camping in the woods. Yeah, so they could true. have been there. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so it's Peg and Pistol, and they're named after Pete because he was Peg like Pete. There's her. And then another oh. name was Pistol Pete when he was like a cowboy or something stupid. So, mm. there you it's, go. Okay. So is their last name Pete? Because I was looking up some of these on Wikipedia the other day, and her name is Peg Pete. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. It's one of those Mario things where it's like, his real name is Mario Mario. They're the Mario brothers. That's stupid. Yeah. Just like Pete's real name is Mario Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he goes by his last name. He's an Italian cat. <laughs> He hides his accent well. <laughs> it's he sounds so weird just like, that, like Jim Cummings. It's so weird that like the 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 world of like Goofy and all them are like all dogs and like I kind of I constantly forget that Pete is a cat. How? Oh. Yeah. Every, everybody thinks he's a fucking bear, and it doesn't make sense. Mickey's the mouse. Well, he's I, the cat. I just assume. Well, I, I knew he was a cat back in like the Steamboat Willie days, but I assume that they transitioned him to being a dog since they always paired him with all the goofy characters. No, no, he's he's still a cat, and it's like a uh, in Ducktales they have the dogs in their universe. They also have pigs too. But in the Goofy movie, everybody's a dog. I don't fucking know, yeah, man. Yeah, where's everyone else? 
Except for that one scene where Mickey Mouse is like hitching a ride or something. Oh yeah, Mickey and Donald are there. <laughs> They're hitchhiking. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in so long. I love that What's movie. That? We have wasted enough time on Peg. She was amazing and voiced by <laughs> April Winchell, which is a great voice actress that's not used very much. Yeah. What is she? What else has she done? She does Claire Bell. Is the is she like a primarily like a Disney actor? Kinda. She does Sylvia from Wander Over Yonder. <laughs> kind of like brash characters. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I gotcha. She, I don't think she's in that much these days, uh, aside from Sylvia. But uh, back in the '90s, she was in like a lot of stuff. Yeah, hmm. I'll have to look that up. She was the mom in Roger Rabbit for Baby. Oh Herman. yeah. Oh. I like her. Hey. Fun fact: she's the daughter of the guy who did Winnie the Pooh. I think his name's like Paul Winchell or something. That's amazing. Oh wow! I'm learning all kinds of things today. Anyways, enough about her. Let's talk about your MILF or mom or whatever. <laughs> we call her a MILF, exactly. Tomato, tomato. Um, so I'll talk about the character that like inspired me to want to do this episode in the first place. Um, I like Delia from Pokemon, Ash's mom, because she's like a terrible mom. <laughs> like the one scene out of the entire anime that always sticks out to me about why she's a bad mom is that like in the third Pokemon movie where she just shows up out of nowhere with Professor Oak and like she's so excited to see Pikachu then Ash shows up she's like oh hi <laughs> like so casually says hi to him <laughs> like she does not give a fuck about him but she loves all of his Pokemon <laughs> she's so terrible and so, she's married to a mime so she's the same as anyone who watches the show who cares about Ash? It's all about the Pokemon. That's so Yeah, accurate. no, just say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was actually kind of funny because um, my my fiance, like I, I probably said on the show a couple weeks ago, um, but uh, Mel and I Mel and I watched uh, the the Sun and Moon anime, and she showed up again uh, this last episode, and she was pretty much still par for the course. <laughs> <laughs> She was trying, like, Ash is a Litten now, and she was trying to take it home with her. You don't need that Pokemon. Episode. Just give it to me. You don't need it. You got plenty. <laughs> he had it for, like, two episodes, and then she's trying to steal it from him. And it's it's weird, because his Litten is, like, really antisocial and hates people, but she, like, just picks him up and starts scratching him, and he, like, has this really weird, like, almost, like, sexual, like, oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's strange. It gets but, uh, intense fast. Yeah, and it's like it's not even that she likes uh, Ash's Pokemon more than him. She likes his friends better more than she him too. Pretty much everyone Zimba? better than Ash. Exactly. It's like you never Jesus, raised him, you have man. One you don't know how he was as a child. <laughs> it's true. She did yell at him for oversleeping in the first episode. She's probably sick of him. Yeah, she probably wanted to get out so she can go fuck Professor Oak because that's what's going on. Can you blame that's her? Right there. Yeah. She probably has way better options. He's pretty creepy. <laughs> then she got the Mr. Mime, and Kyla has many theories about what's going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mimes are good with their hands, what can I say? That's true. <laughs> he has those big suction cup fingers. Oh, gross. <laughs> I don't even want to try to imagine that. And he's got psychic powers, so no means yes sometimes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no I like Delia she's funny because how mean she is <laughs> like inadvertently mean <laughs> she's cool and she's kind of cute I guess I don't know Whoa. I'm there not you really into older women so the truth comes out <laughs> blah <laughs> alright Dustin hit us with another one. Oh, jeez um Okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, so one I was thinking of earlier was Misei slash Mitsi Nohara from Shin-Chan. Yes. She loves this lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's one of my top, she was another, when I was thinking of who my top favorite was, she was one of the contenders. <laughs> um, 
A, I just really love the art style of the show. They all have great designs, but uh, she especially gets like a lot of like really good um, expressions and gets to yell a lot and just be a real bitch to her family. It's so <laughs> weird because like I watch the show kind of around Christmas time, like completely watch the whole thing, and they keep saying her age, and she's like. 24 25 something like that she's fucking um young. yeah my my friend was watching one of the um shin chan movies the other day and it said she was 29 and i was like she doesn't look 20 jesus yeah you That's can't be so... 29 and have two kids it's against the law <laughs> <laughs> i like her because she wants big old titties but yeah she never gets it... them <laughs> is that all she wants out of life? Well, yeah. That's what anybody it's, wants never... out of life. Seriously. I mean, yeah. I, we can all relate. <laughs> I I haven't seen Shin Chan in, like, the longest time. Like, I remember when it was an Adult Swim, like, years ago. Well, we Man, were talking about it yesterday, where they had, like, six voice actors for her. Oh, yeah, because I... Because Kyle had mentioned the the mom from Shin Chan, and I didn't know what her name was, so I had to go look it up. And I didn't realize Shin Chan has like three or four English dubs. Oh yeah, and like, and like the the one of the like I think the second English dub has like Russie Taylor and Great Alyle in it. Yeah, <laughs> and um, it's like what the fuck? How did that happen? I think Tom Kenny's in it too. Yeah, in <laughs> in that right. one in that one she was played by um, Kath Susie, who plays fifty yes. percent of all cartoon moms. I she does. Her. She really does. She's 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 a few on this list, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Was that okay? Didn't they like try to adapt Shin Chan for like Fox Kids or something? The, yeah, that's what the dub was. But oh, I don't. Oh God. I don't think it ever aired here. Where weirdly enough, I think it was I, like a UK thing. I remember seeing Shin Chan like early in the morning versions then i remember then it was on adult swim i was like why is this kid show on adult swim and then they started swearing I'm like oh god what's happening oh that's why they're like Whoa. here's a penis for no reason and you to must have, have honor, honor. You, to be a man you must have honor a penis <laughs> it's literally my only takeaway from that show every day I, every day when i wake up i recite that to myself it's my mission statement Oh, <laughs> it's a good mission statement. <laughs> so we were we were fucking around with a. I just bought Puyo Pop or Puyo Puyo. Oh yeah. And what are I the characters? Get that. I don't know if it's the same voice actor or whatever, but it sounds exactly like Boo from Shin Chan. Oh jeez. <laughs> the kid. The kid is like super monotone, and it's it's hilarious. He just like Boo. I love that voice. <laughs> so good and so shin chan's mom's huge tits yeah i that's actually part of why i like like that's part of why she's one of my favorites is because of her um funimation dub voice i really like that voice everybody's got a good voice i think it's Steve yeah. bloom isn't it for his dad or... is it yeah i think so i'll have to look i'll have to check again yeah because that yeah, because I think in the Funimation dub, he's using his like more higher pitched voice than he does for like when he does Tom. <laughs> oh and yeah, other, and Spike. You know what is bizarre to me is Steve Blum did um, Yaki Doodle in Harvey Birdman. That's did he now? Damn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go rewatch that now because that's amazing. Oh, <laughs> uh, I I I had a. This is like completely unrelated. Like, I finally realized one of the like I have a, like a cast of characters that I want to do something with someday, and I realized like I want one of them to be voiced by Steve Bloom now. Have all of them be voiced by Steve Bloom? <laughs> just the entire show, just Steve Bloom. <laughs> That's the one you go on live. He's great. I was just playing Dead Rising, and I'm like, is that him? There's like a <laughs> bunch of bosses voiced by him. The awesome. the first one? Yeah. I, I really want to play the first one. I haven't played any of them. Oh, they're so good. That That's what I hear. It looks fun. It's like, it's taken so seriously. And then you can beat the shit out of people dressed up as Mega Man. <laughs> and throw Sir Bot heads on them. Yeah, it's so silly, but it's like, take me seriously. 
And then do a pile drive on a zombie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but like, yeah. yeah, so so Steve Bloom, best mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Yaki Doodle. <laughs> yes, Kyle, it's your turn. Let's look over here. Let's talk about the drunk. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Elga's mom. Let's talk about Miriam. <laughs> I do like I like the voice actor screaming Marianne, like her dad was the best. Oh um, fuck who? Oh Maurice Lamarche was Bob. Oh shit, that's so oh great. yeah. <laughs> Maurice Lamarche is Maurice. one of my he's, favorites. He's amazing. Yeah, he was the Beeper like, King. He would be poor. Big right Bob now. is like the best character of him. <laughs> Whenever I think of Big Bob, the only line I remember is him screaming, Pipe down, I'm watching the wheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I forgot about that. That's the best. <laughs> watching the wheel. God. If you want to talk about terrible mothers, I think she was pretty terrible. She was pretty terrible, was, wasn't she? She was an alcoholic, Kyle. She had a problem. Uh, 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 an undiagnosed it, problem. They never said she drank alcohol. It was smoothies. Craig huh? Bartlett said it was an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kid's show. That's why she made smoothies all the time. It was a metaphor for alcohol. Yeah, see? Huh? Huh? It's either that or she crushed pills in her smoothies. <laughs> some, she had some kind of problem. That's why she was tired. I... I always assumed it was alcoholism because she's always drinking something and she's passing out everywhere. Yeah. I remember you can call them smoothies all say. you want, but we all know the truth. <laughs> I remember she like no. made her lunch one time and it was like a lottery ticket or just something stupid <laughs> like that. Hey, that's good. I'd love a she lottery tried. ticket. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than nothing. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I like the few attempts she made to actually like try to be a mom, but like failed utterly, completely at it. She was like, "I <laughs> ride mechanical bulls." Remember that? And then, oh, that's oh, like yeah, the one the episode. <laughs> that's like the one episode I remember with her. <laughs> she liked her her eldest better. They both did. <laughs> they, yeah. Yeah. That was a bitch. <laughs> She's conceited. <laughs> I never liked Olga. I thought she was dumb. I like her. She's voiced by Nika Futterman. That oh, gets yeah. her bonus points. I guess. I just <laughs> like I hate I hate characters that are like flawless characters because they're boring and like eh, you're the favorite child. Bleh. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't think it ever came across like Olga was. I, I don't know. You could tell Olga actually did love Helga and wanted things to be good oh, between yeah, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't, it didn't that, seem that was... like Olga was, like, a spoiled, like... Yeah. Everyone pay attention to me type of person. Oh, totally. Yeah, like... <laughs> Unless I'm remembering kinda... wrong. <laughs> oh, no, no. There's, like, plenty of times where she is, like, completely, like, very genuine. She's, like, a very genuine person. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, she never comes off as, like like being really pretentious or anything she's just that's just how she is I yeah just, i just liked how emotionally fragile she was <laughs> <laughs> wait why why did she what was that episode where she went into like a depression spiral she, I wasn't it, it, was minus over. Or something. it, it oh, was yeah. an a minus jesus she had her mascara what? running down her face <laughs> I thought that was—I thought that was another episode where she had a depression spiral because she got left at the altar or something. Oh yeah, what? wasn't what? she was like marrying someone, but it was like all a scam or something, and Helga heard him spill the beans on his plan. Oh, that's I think true. So. Sounds right. <laughs> hey, Arnold was heavy, man. And then she became the beeper queen, and she took her job <laughs> seriously. <laughs> she was turning her life around. She was. She, I mean, she was. Huh? She was good at her job. She was Kath Isusi. Yeah. yeah. Kath Susi. I I like her. All the cartoon moms. She was Princess. What's her name too? I like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle likes Earthworm Jim. 
I like Earthworm Jim. I haven't actually things. seen the cartoon in a long time, so I have no idea if it holds up. Is it still good? Yeah, it's pretty great. I, uh, awesome. I'll have to. I'll have to give it to you. I think there's a DVD rip somewhere. Oh, no, like I, I have the DVD they released for it, but I just haven't watched it yet. <laughs> oh, no, it's pretty I, great. <laughs> I've never watched Earthworm Jim, but I love that one scene Kyle sent me about like the generic president. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the best. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Psycho was great, and he was Jim Cummings as well. Disney let him out of his cage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jim, you have one month, and then you need to come back, okay? <laughs> we always say that when, like, Mel and I are watching TV, and we hear Jim Cummings like it isn't Disney. It's like, who let Jim out? <laughs> one day we're gonna Jim have Cummings him on is the show. I'm oh jeez! Like, We're so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jim, we met Jim. He was a very nice man. Mel I gave him a hug. I wanted to meet him. He was at like a. So like I live in Boise, Idaho. That has and like nothing is ever here. Like we had a like a Comic Con here once, and he was here for it, and I missed it. No. Oh. And I regret it to this day. That's he voiced sad. Mr. Bumpy from Bump in the Night. Oh shit! Oh god. That was my favorite I, show as a child. So, maybe it was you, Dustin. I remember someone on Facebook, like, a couple months ago, like, reminded me of Bump in the Night, and I had to go, like, watch two episodes of it. It might have been who, me, because I have no idea who else on this planet would have posted about it. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> was it, like, on the one Saturday morning or something? Um, it, I think it was before one Saturday morning, but it was on oh, ABC. God. Oh, God. There was a before time. I have, like, <laughs> McDonald toys still. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, anyway. Um, Who's next? You went, right, Kyle? Yeah. Okay, then I guess it's my turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk about Linda from Bob's Burgers. All right. <laughs> exactly. Um... I, I like Linda only in the fact that I see her and Bob's relationship as how Mel and I are going to be his parents. <laughs> <laughs> because she is very much the very enthusiastic, like, that is going to be her as a mob, and I'm just going to be standing in the corner and saying, oh my god. Oh my <laughs> god. It's, like, painfully accurate. <laughs> it's painfully... <laughs> I just hope my kids are half as sarcastic as their kids are. But, uh, no. I, I like Linda. She's fun. She always does dumb stuff. I watched the new, the latest or one of the latest episodes where she broke one of her kids out of school. Oh yeah. It's like what mom does that for their kids? Cuz she what cuz Louise like pants some kid because they were being a dick and like <laughs> she was getting in school suspension for it. Oh jeez. Like, oh, he's like I want you to realize that pantsing someone is wrong but standing up for people is right. So she busted her out of school. <laughs> uh Linda's no, great. She, I I think like every almost every character on that show is great, but you know, Lin- burgers is a treasure. <laughs> there's this, yeah, there's this porn image going around where they drew Linda like really hot or whatever, and then they oh, have gee- dialogue I- next to it. And it's like you can't read it in her voice. <laughs> it's so. I think I know great. exactly the one you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know if I want to get posted one you're on Four Chan a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You too, and you're four chan. What made me understand it? <laughs> okay. What I like about that one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though it's mostly awful, it's I still go back every day. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Lynn is like probably one of the best cartoon moms in like the a long while. Just I don't know. She's very. She's definitely one of the funniest. She's she's like she's super funny and like I. I, I don't know. I relate to her. Uh, I don't know. She seems like a like a mom that could actually exist. Yeah, and probably will exist in the, in my in my future. She's <laughs> she's not a hundred percent terrible. She's actually does the mom job. No, she like she tries her best. Her, yeah, yeah. She she does her best. She supports her husband and his failing business adventure. But <laughs> you know, she had dreams. <laughs> 
Uh, I feel like a lot uh, of a lot of the best episodes are about Linda. Like uh, the one where she gets a job at that grocery store is a good one. Uh, oh, the, yeah. the slumber any, party. Any, yeah, any adventure with Linda is great. Yeah. <laughs> Though honestly, I could I could say there's like not I can't like point to a bad episode of Bob's Burger because like every character gets pretty good mileage out of it. Yeah. Like, the only the only character I can see like kind of not like being as up to par as like anything that has to do with Tina. Like I don't mind Tina. Really? Like I so, I sometimes find her like preteen adventures endearing, but like Tina is a character, like her voice kind of annoys me. <laughs> See I was but, gonna say uh, Tina's probably my favorite character. Tina and Teddy. I do like I Teddy. I do love Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh, Teddy says is just Oh god. Uh, the, oh, the the same episode I was talking about earlier, uh the the B plot was that Linda was out for the day. So Teddy had to like st- uh, stand in at the restaurant. He was just so awful at it. Got jalapeno <laughs> juice in his eye. <laughs> he did. And he's like, <laughs> trying to find people through sound, <laughs> just screaming at customers and like dropping shit on them. It's amazing. Oh jeez, oh, Bob's Burger is so good. It is so good. <laughs> it's oh, it's one God. of the few shows that um, my whole family watches together and always gets a kick out of it. That's awesome. Um, I can't imagine anyone in my family watching Bob's Burgers, but... My brother's a big uh, H. John Benjamin fan. So he... yeah. John Benjamin is amazing. He enjoys them. I like him as Coach McGurk. The best. Coach McGurk. <laughs> I keep forgetting he was the son on uh, Dr. Katz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched that show. I only I started watched... watching it, like, uh, last year. It's very I've... good. I've seen a few episodes. The only one I remember is the one with Brian Regan on it. Brian Regan is a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that's that's the thing about Dr. Katz is it, it's all pretty funny, but since it's all so similar, all of the episodes kind of bleed together. They really do. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, yeah. you know, I, you, get to he- you get to hear some at the time up and comer stand up do their bit for two minutes yeah exactly when whenever i'm drawing i like to put it on as like a background noise since you don't really even need to watch it you can just listen to it that that's actually a really good idea dr katz would make amazing background filter yeah is uh, a dog outside is uh bobcat gold white in any of them uh maybe i think so i love that man oh I want to say uh, he is. Yeah. Moral of the story, Linda's an awesome mom. Linda is. <laughs> <laughs> to cap that off. <laughs> Long story uh, short, Linda is cool. <laughs> I like her. She's cool. She's a fun mom. <laughs> I can't wait to be married to her in like t- a month and a half. Whoa. <laughs> oh, geez, that's Melanie not too far Melanie, off. Melanie doesn't listen to this show unless she's on it. <laughs> Anyway, so now we can uh, talk about Melanie. I mean, <laughs> don't do dog ill of my <laughs> my woman. I'm sorry, no. You love her. I do. She's cool. Anyway, yeah, but um, yeah, Dustin, I think it's your turn again. All right. So, are you guys familiar with the Loud House? Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I've read watched a-, a few episodes. <laughs> Read aloud, the mom from the Loud House. Used to have her face obscured, but now it's available for all to see. Okay, yeah, that, like, I never understood why that was a thing that cartoons used to do. Um, yeah. Like, like, cart- like, Cow and Chicken at least made a joke out of it. <laughs> but, yeah, like, like, in this day, like, did they explain why they never showed him for the from the waist up or they just one episode decided hey we're gonna show their face i don't think they ever said why they did it i I mean i'm guessing it was just to be kind of like um i don't know like peanuts how you never saw the adults or something like that but um i'm kind of glad they went back on it because yeah there's there's really not a whole lot you can do with it that works (laughs) yeah um yeah, she's cool. She's nice. Uh, she popped out eleven children. Jesus Christ! Like, are they Catholic or something? <laughs> Is that why they have so many kids? I mean, probably. <laughs> Don't hate, man. 
<laughs> uh, Do they um, ever she say, must like, have what job they have? Um, oh, I don't know. I'll need, I'll need to go back and look. They gotta have some pretty cushy jobs to afford having that many kids. Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> it always bothered See, me, you're... like watching Beavis and Butthead. I'm like, how do they <laughs> afford that house? <laughs> like Do that. They have yeah, because like, don't they? They mention their moms from time to time, but I mean, who knows what they do? <laughs> uh, um, but uh, now that I think about it, I don't have that much to say about her. She's pretty much just a typical cartoon mom. Shows up when they need her for the plot, and then she's not there. But uh, she's attractive. I like that. <laughs> There you go. I mean, hell, that's half the reason why we like any characters, because they're visually appealing. Yeah. That's good enough. Uh, I, who Who is your favorite loud child? Mm, let me think. I, t- I have a friend I talk about this with every now and oh. then. Because <laughs> it, it fluctuates so often, because they're all pretty yeah. good. But um, I think my favorite of the loud children is Luann. Because of her shitty, terrible jokes. Oh, yeah. I can relate. I love <laughs> shitty, terrible jokes. The fucking Lost comic. <laughs> oh, guess. right, on her wall. <laughs> so what a amazing. reference. <laughs> she seems like the type who would be into overused memes. Probably. <laughs> What about you guys? What are your favorite loud kids? I, I don't think Kyle would have one. I don't know the Kyle. name, but I like the rocker one. Oh, Luna. She's cool. There we go. Yeah, I like yeah, her. Yeah, she's she was my favorite at first, but they bear, they never use her. She's like the one they use the least out of all of them. I Which she is was, too bad, but... I thought she was played by... Uh, fuck, I can't even think. Chris Summer. For a while, and um, I was like, "Oh shit!" Aren't like half of them just voiced by Great Lyle? Yeah. <laughs> well, she, I think Except, she, she voices like uh, three of them. I know. I know the girl who voiced Kari on Digimon is the nerdy one. Yeah. Um, That's about all I know. Oh uh, shit! Her name isn't coming to me right. I Lara Jill Miller. That's it. Yeah. There you okay. go. Um. Yeah. yeah, she's got I like mean, a raspy oh. voice, something. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, I think yeah, Luna's played by Nika Futterman too. Oh, damn. Oh, well, there you go. Um, what about I, you? I, I I like I've never really watched the show, but I guess it's kind of a tie between Lori and um, which is the one that's in the soccer and all that. Lynn. There you go. The, one of those two. <laughs> those are all good, respectable choices. <laughs> I have no reason for it. I just think I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> hey, as long as it's an answer to the question, that's fine. There you go. I don't need a reason <laughs> for things. <laughs> just say random what you, names. What do you need from me? <laughs> I like uh, <laughs> like Jennifer or Loud. That's one, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a. I thought they were all L names. No, there's the the lost child. Yeah, it's the, it's the lost cousin. <laughs> they all J names. It's an alternate universe. <laughs> there you go. Did they have an episode where they switched genders? Yeah, Whoa. it was okay. like. I thought I remembered that. Um, it's been a while since I watched it, but I think it was pretty much that. Oh man, I wish I had all brothers. And then it's like, be careful what you wish for. Wah, wah. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, he'll be careful what he wishes for from now on. <laughs> it sounds like a uh, fairly odd parents episode. Uh, <laughs> they, they did have an episode where Timmy was gender bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they were really sexist to him because he's a girl and they don't care what he thinks. <laughs> like in real life. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Butch Hartman was on the nose there. <laughs> um, yeah, Kyle, why don't you hit us with another one? I'm gonna go out Did of you... left field. Go for it. I'm oh, gonna no, go whoa. so left, it's gonna be right. 
It's not even on the <laughs> fucking list because you didn't even write it down. You oh, wow. didn't tell me. Oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> what about Peggy Hill? Come on now. Ah, oh, Peggy you Hill's the best. Her? I know, so I'm ashamed, ashamed now. Man. It's funny, everyone hates Peggy Hill. Online. I love Peggy Hill because I love that she's so obnoxious and full of herself. Yeah, I I, I mean, I think she's entertaining. I just see so much I, I, seething hatred. Yeah. I mean, how could you not love a character who is so obviously inept at everything she does, but she's so overconfident and, like, up her own ass? Yeah. Like, if, if it wasn't don't. intentional, then it would be one thing, but, you know... I think people don't like it because she never really gets her comeuppance and it's always like it works out for her in the end something like that I'm... yeah <laughs> it, it's it's it, i don't i don't know if she ever like she <laughs> yeah. did fall out of a scan of the sky yeah. <laughs> and broke every bone to in Tom her body Petty's free falling <laughs> 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 just the end credits where it's playing free falling it's just just all just her falling and it just keeps going and going it it's very fitting music god bless you tom petty man king of the hill is one of those shows i really wish had a dvd release oh oh, wait no it does have a dvd release or something i just need to buy them but i haven't actually watched a lot of king of the hill episodes i've missed so many of them i I don't think they're Uh, like making them though they only stopped at a certain season i I don't know if they i I think, I think I think they recently made, they made it all the way to the end. Yeah, I think recently but, they released a lot of like I think a third party release mm, picked up the license oh since Fox didn't want to. But um, yeah, I I think King of the Hill is like one of those few shows which, which was like consistent all throughout the entire run. Like I don't think there's a bad episode of King of the Hill. Yeah, it died so gracefully. It did, and like I was nice that they actually let them. Because weren't they, like, they thinking they were going to cancel the season before they actually did, so they actually knew that they were ending? Yeah. I think so. I mean, I still don't, like, know how I feel about the final episode. I think, like, that whole thing with Hank and Bobby right at the end was kind of like, eh, that was hokey, but, you know, what are you going to do? But he finally yeah. accepted his boy. Sometimes hokey because is Because his good. boy was into something he was into. Like, they found a, a common fat interest. fuck and he stupid. likes to eat. Come on, now. I think it should have ended with Hank finally accepting Bobby for who he is instead of trying to change him into something he wants him to be. Well, maybe it's he does in the future. He's big now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to yeah, bring it Bobby. back. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I like what are, what are some good... Me. What? <laughs> Well, Peggy Hill spanked me. She got really oh, yeah. pissed off because I oh, pulled her pants down. Oh, because Kyle looks like du- <laughs> his Kyle looks like Dooley. Oh, right. She's okay, I get the Dooley. reference now. I look exactly you sound like, like Dooley it. too. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many gin- ginger characters that Kyle looks just like. <laughs> he is the, he is the all ginger. I was in Harry Potter. All you gingers all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I love Peggy Hill. She's the best part of that show. What are some yeah, good Peggy Hill episodes? Jeez. I, I know, I feel bad. <laughs> Who's next? Um, How dare you? I do look... Wait, Dustin, oh. you were going to ask something. Oh, what are some good Peggy Hill episodes? Um, uh, <laughs> I love the one where she goes down to teach Spanish in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, like that Latin, uh, the, like that pastor guy on the on the telenovela. <laughs> like she tries to go teach Spanish down there. Is that the one where she? Any... Is that the one where she accidentally kidnaps the girl? I think so. Oh, I just remember she went down there and tried to teach Spanish, and it's so obvious she doesn't know Spanish. <laughs> oh it's yeah, cute, I think though. that was the same one because uh, Hank used that in court. He had Peggy come up to the stand and uh, show them <laughs> how well she speaks Spanish. <laughs> she doesn't speak it well at all. And because of that, she was found innocent. <laughs> Kyle, uh, what's a good Peggy Hill episode? I remember she got conned for making a college degree online. And then she tried to do like an illegal gambling business. And the whole <laughs> town helped her. 
I don't remember that one. Really? That's a relatable episode. We've all been there. Yeah. I tried to get my degree I, online. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do like the episode like after she had her sky falling accident where like Cotton is just screaming at her through the entire episode. <laughs> Oh yeah, like uh, it was like a therapy or something to get her moving again. Yeah, because she'd like basically give it up on trying to be like walk again, and Cotton just screams at her through the entire episode until she gets so mad she walks again. <laughs> the best. There was the I miss one... Cotton, but he died. There was the one where they were trying to be cool. She was trying to be a cool mom. They were all like awful Hollywood type people. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember that they were doing a cotillion party i kind of kind of remember that i think i know what one you're talking about um but only because i remember it from a youtube poop <laughs> <laughs> i haven't watched a youtube poop in a long time <laughs> if, if you don't feel like watching all the king of the hill just watch the youtube poops you'll get the gist of it <laughs> The only YouTube poop that I've really watched is the one about Scooby Doo. Oh yeah, a classic. The adventure of Scooks. The adventures <laughs> of Scooks. <laughs> the best I've ever seen. My favorite are the uh, Robotnik music videos. <laughs> oh pingas. geez, yeah. <laughs> what I think the I. St- I think I still have a couple of those on my iPod that I still listen to to this day. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah. But yeah, Peggy Pe- Hill. She's a good choice, Kyle. I feel like I said I feel ashamed that I didn't think of that myself. I'll go into the shame corner now. You ne- you'll get it yourself. next Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Many floggings. <laughs> you have a whole year to prepare for next Mother's Day. There you go. You just have to practice every day. Retribution will be will be done. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see, who do I want to do? Uh, Dustin, have you ever watched Good Vibes? Of course, I've watched Good Vibes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I was I waiting. I was about... waiting for this one to be brought up. Because <laughs> I want to talk about Babs Brando. Cause she's like the best mom ever. I love she her. is. I love... I love a mom who is like a reformed stripper and trying to make better of her life, but she's also like the world's most supportive mom. <laughs> <laughs> like she's a fat fuck kid and she like lets him do all this stupid shit just so he's accepted. That's the thing about good vibes is like I I don't think it's necessarily like a you know, super smart show, but I think it's, oh, it's extremely not. likable. Like all the main characters are just like well, most of the main characters are very likable. Just you want to see him succeed. It's it's yeah. just nice. And it it's, only, it's such a nice show. It only had one season, but the characters were I, rounded I'm, out so well. Yeah, I'm so fucking. And what made me annoyed is they aired the um the episodes out of order at the end. I hate That's that. True. Because, like, the last episode was supposed to be the prom episode, and they aired that, like, three before the end. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, the whole arc of the season was, like, broken up. But, uh... Goes to show no. how much faith they had in the show. Oh, God. Well, they did, like, a season of that and a season of the new Beavis and Butthead, and then MTV decided that animation wasn't lucrative. Yeah. Which, fuck you, MTV. Some of the best animation came from you. I, I think they had, like... I can't think of very many MTV animated shows that I didn't really like. Daria is a masterpiece. I Brothers love Daria, Grunt. love Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Brothers Grunt is maybe. Adult party cartoon we just don't talk about. That was Spike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, was it? I thought yeah. that was MTV. Uh-uh. JK, everybody. Don't listen to me. MTV had um, Clone High, which is probably my yes. favorite show uh-huh. ever. Clone High is the best, and we will one day do a show on Clone High. Oh, jeez. I need to rewatch the entire season for like the millionth time. The one season. <laughs> Dude, I was looking through my DVD collection the other day, and I have the box set of Clone High, and it has the audacity to say the complete first season on it. Oof. <laughs> that second season's gotta come someday. <laughs> We've been waiting for like 15 years. 
<laughs> uh, I'm I'm still holding out hope. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I I liked Babs as a character. She was, I don't know. Jeez, that is that great. Was, that was a great tangent. <laughs> I forgot we were talking <laughs> That's how about. The show works. We can't stay on subject for more than two minutes. <laughs> Clone oh, High no. is great, but yeah, not a- like. I- I, I like the episode where like they go to the concert, but she's like being a completely overbearing mom. But she kind of learns her lesson by the end of it. And oh yeah, she decides to let her. She has to let her ch- her kid be a kid. That was because yeah, another mom life. talked shit on her though. She felt like self. conscious She did. Yeah. So she's like vulnerable at the same time. Like she's t- trying to do her best being a single mom in a new town, and she's friends with a fat as fuck over <laughs> teacher. Okay. <laughs> that's her best friend her best friends are as a fattest buck teacher and a teenager <laughs> cause he's friends with that one the what's her face that her kid wants to fuck <laughs> and I the show was so great I love I how love supportive she is friend. of Mondo <laughs> which weird oh, oh what's, what's his name what's no, with... yeah that's it he, he's voiced bully. by Tony Hale <laughs> from Arrested Development oh shit what? What? I love the bully. The bully was oh. great. Everything oh, yeah. was so good. <laughs> I, I feel like I didn't care for him at first, but then he got funnier as it went on. And it get, the good vibes gave me an appreciation for Josh Gad. Y'all are acting he was... like a bunch of fart tanyans. <laughs> <laughs> like, how does this bully have enough like literary knowledge to make a Three Musketeers reference. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like especially to reference an obscure character like D'Artagnan. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Good Vibes is on DVD, right? Yes. I think so. Yeah. I wish it was on Netflix. So I'd watch it all yeah, the time. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> for it was for a while, but then they just took all their Viacom stuff down. Netflix, why do I pay for you if you just keep taking down all the goods? Yeah, because they moved all the Viacom stuff over to Hulu. Yeah. That's why I don't have Nickelodeon on there anymore. Oh, she yeah. mad. But even the stuff on Hulu, they only have, like, not all that much. I think the only yeah. animated MTV shows they have on there are Beavis and Butthead and Daria. Yeah. And if I want to watch Daria, I'll just put my DVDs off the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it anytime I, I want. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So I watched Daria uh like for the first time like online through like old like bootleg whatever's and it had all the music on there. So it was like, "Oh, that's cool. This is playing a gorilla song during the interstitials. That's cool." But like when I watched the DVD release and they have all the copyrighted music pulled out, like it didn't take me out of it at all. Yeah, like I I don't know. I never really watched Daria for the licensed music, so right. it didn't really bother me that it was taken out, but like yeah it's like i get i get it that was the thing back in the day when MP- mtv still played you know music yeah um but i i don't i think taking the music out of daria doesn't take away from it at all yeah like it it sucks but it's not all that big a deal i'm, I'm that yeah. type of purist that's like don't touch my shit <laughs> <laughs> there there is one thing i'm like that with um on the topic of MTV, have either of you guys heard of the Syphil and Ollie show? Yes. <laughs> I, that's, uh, no. That's it's it's so it's like a God. How do I even explain it? It's a show about sock puppets, and it's supposed to be like they have a like public access show or something, you know, just with like various uh, skits and segments. And um, mm-hmm. every now and then they would ha- like they have a bunch of songs in every episode, and sometimes they would do licensed songs. Like, um, uh, well, none are coming to mind right now, but, uh, <laughs> but they, they do, they do. Um, but they recently put the whole show up on, you know, like Amazon and iTunes and stuff, and they took out all the license songs. And that's the one thing where I'm like, nope, mm-mm, gotta have them in. That's a bitch. Yeah, especially for like such an obscure show. But I think I think they're all up on YouTube anyway, so whatever. There you go. People will preserve the originals. I was more than willing to give my money for them, but I guess not now. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't remember too. Um, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show had licensed music oh, in it yeah. too. Oh yeah. 
Like oh. Millie, Millie Vanilli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My favorite part about that, since they took out the music on the DVD releases, is when they ask him if they have any requests, and they say, how about Girl, You Know It's True? And Mara's like, oh, okay. And then they just play, like, a Beat It knockoff by Michael Jackson. <laughs> Jesus. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um... Yeah. Just play whatever. Maybe they'll buy it. <laughs> kids are dumb. They don't even know what that song is. <laughs> These kids were bored 20 years after the fact. <laughs> what is Billy Vanilli anymore? <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, yeah, you guys want to do two more each? That sounds good. Fine. Okay. Well, geez, Kyle, don't be such a grump about it. <laughs> <laughs> when am I not? <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to it's watch true. Good Vibes after this now. That was a good I know, show. I'm going to have to do that now. <laughs> I have a viewing party. It was a good show. But... <laughs> it was a good show. <laughs> Love 90s deck. You're too Good young to amazing. remember. Anyway, uh, Dustin, why don't you go ahead? Oh, right. It's my turn. Um, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. wait. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's fine. Yeah, because you just did uh, Babs. Oh, yeah. Okay. You just Sorry, forgot, I to forgot to put it on the I'm writing, list. I'm writing this mm. down so I know how to do the images later. <laughs> I'm not writing but, it down. Okay. You're typing it down. There's the difference. I'm copy-pasting <laughs> it. <laughs> it's even ruin the illusion. <laughs> You're ruining the illusion. Anyway. <laughs> Can I ruin the illusion? <laughs> if you feel like it. You're the guest. You can do whatever the hell you want. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> We treat our guests right around here. (laughs) So one of my favorites is um, Maria Rivera from El Tigre. Manny's mom is great. The Adventures of Manny Rivera. (laughs) It's a fact. (laughs) And she holds up a book. I like when she said she's telling him about how one time all of the inmates escaped and um, beat up his father all at the same time. And then she had a book about it. (laughs) There's a book for everything. That, <laughs> Just out of nowhere. I wonder how long that book was. How can you stretch <laughs> that out into a whole book? I don't know. It could be a very compelling event. That's true. Maybe they get a, really detailed about it. It's a right? paragraph and there's just pictures. <laughs> uh, very graphic pictures of before and after. <laughs> there's a lot. It's a very it's a picture book. It's very detailed. <laughs> it's a pop up book. Uh, but no, um, I love Jorge. I love Jorge's stuff. Oh, He's such same. an amazing artist. Huge fan. Um, I like what they did with Maria. I like that. Um, at first they were. Um, at first they made it seem like she was gonna be the. Oh, I'm taking Manny away. She's from the all wet this. blanket. Yeah, but then they uh, did the exact opposite, and mate just had her get more involved in his life. And I thought. I, I think it's cool that um, they have divorcee parents that um, neither of them are painted like, you know, the bad guy in the situation. Which, you know, isn't, you know, all that rare these days, but... Like, well, Manny's dad is, like, still in love with her completely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I, and I like that even though she um, doesn't really want to get back together with him, she still wants to be friends with him. She still wants right. to be part of their life. And I like that they made her the librarian at Manny's school and gave her kind of a more active role. I like when she puts on her glove and goes crazy. Oh yeah, Plata Peligrosa. <laughs> Plata Peligrosa. I was thinking about uh, that scene the other day when she was talking about trying it for this first time. She's like, it was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like drugs. <laughs> No, I I love all the like the stupid superhero designs in that show. Like oh, it's same. so it's so Mexican, but it's like so beautiful at the same time. I love how not stylized the same, not the same it Mex- is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Whenever I think about my favorite Nicktoons, that one's probably my top favorite. Like I don't I don't know. It's not like I wouldn't say it's the absolute funniest, but just the combo of the the characters, the jokes, the just how nice everything looks. Ugh. Mwah. I I think like El Tigre was just very inventive and like very different from um like any other show they had on 
mm-hmm. at the time. The and it bumps like, me just... up. The... Oh, it bumps me up that it lasted only one season. Did it? Uh, yeah, it didn't last long. Oh shit! And then they had that episode where like you got to vote in about like what happened at the end. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if whenever anything pulls something like that, I wonder how accurate it is. <laughs> I think I think they did really end up releasing what all three endings were though. Yeah, but like part of me thinks it's rigged. <laughs> yeah, like they were just always gonna show the good ending anyway. Probably. But it lets you think you're making a choice. <laughs> right. Kids like to think that they have a choice in life. <laughs> yeah. Whether or not they actually do, who cares? Right. They, they were <laughs> like, hey, no, guys, like, should Ned Flanders get with Ma or fuck Mrs. Kerbobble? <laughs> oh, yeah. And then she died. <laughs> and then she Ned should <laughs> she get died. with Maud. Uh, but no, I, I, I love El Tigre and I especially loved Book of Life, but it's. It's amazing to like when you just see these like very simple looking characters, but then you look really close and like there's all these little intricate designs on everything. I love that. I love how they're made up of like very simple, easy to read shapes, but then all the detail is on the inside. Right. And that's great. And Jorge, like I love seeing all the paintings he puts up on Tumblr and stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. The first first thing I saw of his was uh, the buzz on Maggie. Oh, I love the buzz on Maggie. He worked on Mucha Lucha, too. Oh, Oh, yeah. How how do you guys feel about Mucha Lucha? I liked it as a kid. I thought it was fun. I I never watched it, but without it, Donut Assault wouldn't exist. That's... (laughs) (laughs) I, 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 I... I have not seen it since I was a kid, so I have no idea if it holds up as well. I don't. I don't imagine it does. But yeah. like as a kid, I would watch that shit because I watched anything Kids WB had on. Yeah, I, I, did, I thought it was all right. I, like, it was never a top favorite, but yeah, I thought it was nice. I thought it had some really cool designs, which LT like, Gray took even further. Yeah, I, I think it was really good for the time because I think it was one of the first shows that. Um, really tried to introduce American audience to like a Mexican culture. Yeah. You know, it was pretty simple. It was like pretty simplified Mexican culture, but like they got in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how much like work Jorge did. I think he was a character designer and stuff, which, you know, looking at the costumes kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Mucha Lucha was fun. I think Isn't that's me- what he did on buzz on Maggie too. Mostly like a uh, character mm-hmm. design stuff. We, yeah, we went to this art show of his in LA, and I was so excited. I was like, "I'm gonna buy one of his paintings. I got a credit card. Fuck it!" <laughs> I was all excited, and then I saw the prices of the paintings. So, Ooh. never mind. Never mind. <laughs> like, hey man, they're originals. Like me and JD have two different like uh, ways of something being expensive. <laughs> mm-hmm. My Kyle's expensive is like a thousand dollars. Mine expensive is twenty dollars. <laughs> oh jeez, his paintings are like you know. fourteen hundred dollars. I was like, ooh, I don't well, think so. What? What that, if I could? That's yeah. not too bad. Like I mean, some, some of my paintings for my favorite artists are like four hundred dollars, five hundred. I can do that, but fourteen, oof. Yeah, and I'm. And I'm I'm just over here feeling bad for going to McDonald's for lunch. <laughs> Damn. That's how poor I am. I was feeling bad since I bought a new uh headset and mic just for this occasion. Oh, like 20, oh. 20 bucks and then and it ended up not being not working. Uh, oh. I feel bad now. <laughs> we got you live and learn. <laughs> uh I will, but yeah, I will Manny's buy you mom 20 awesome. coffees. Yeah, you 20 better. Co- <laughs> 20 I don't like coffee, but I'll appreciate the the act. <laughs> but um, yeah, Maria's good. I like her hair. She does have pretty rocking hair. It's big, and I like poofy. her silver superhero costume. It's yeah. rad. Isn't it like ill fitting too? Pro- what? Yeah, she says costume slightly chafing. <laughs> <laughs> The buzz. Kyle, why don't you do a thing? Okay. Hit us with your best shot. Let's talk about Kyle Francine. Loves, Kyle loves that song. Oh, Woo! Yeah. From American Dad? 
Yeah, I have a character <laughs> named Tough Cookie, and the entire fight, I imagine it would be to hit me with your best shot, <laughs> or he's just screaming hit me with your best shot. <laughs> Cal goes deep with his references. Because <laughs> he's a real tough anyway. cookie with a long history. Anyways. I get it. <laughs> um, Francine Smith. I love her. She's cool. She has a spanking fetish. She's very funny. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Everybody has a kink. She sure do. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like her. She's kind of a bad mom. She's kind of a good mom. She's better than Lois, I would say. Yeah, I it's feel not like any time to top Lois is a mom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time, even when she's a bad mom, it usually comes from a good place most of the time. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> it and she's kind of a a, a ditz. You know? Yeah. She's not the smartest, you know, thing. Her episodes are always super fun. It is. Man, I really need to go back and watch American Dad. I feel like it's been ages. American Dad is like... Oh, okay, so... they they The Family Guy people put out that show Border Town. And we always said that it, it like, belonged where... Like, when American Dad first came out. Mm-hmm. And... It's like American Dad like came out and was very much of its time of like the Bush era, like pro, you know, uh, pro patriotism and all that stuff. And like I love that it has evolved and like become completely different over time. Now that like that is not the political landscape anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> thought... any any lesser show would have just held on to that or would have been canceled years ago. But hell, it went to TBS and is still thriving. I think. I haven't seen it since it moved to TBS. I've heard mixed things, but I heard it's uh, picking up now. It's yeah, it's watchable I've, I've still. seen it. I've seen new episodes. Yeah, I've seen new episodes here and there, and it's you know pretty much the same as it's always been. That's good. It's family. It's Family Guy without the cutaway jokes, <laughs> which it's, is a marked improvement. It's Family Guy, but actually funny. Exactly. <laughs> it's the show that Seth MacFarlane doesn't work too hard on because he lets other people do it. I, I love and it that pays show off. So yeah. <laughs> Roger's the best but... character. He is the best <laughs> character. <laughs> Roger feels like a character that I feel like I should hate, but he's just so funny. He's the lovable like he, asshole. He's like... Yeah. Yeah, Roger has no redeeming qualities whatsoever, but you love him then. It's so weird how that works out since like <laughs> it's so easy to have a character just be a huge dick and just not make him funny at all. Like look at Family Guy. <laughs> But Roger just pulls it off so well. Everyone in Family Guy's a dick. Yeah, but they're not it, funny dicks not. like Roger. It's yeah, like at first, like everyone being an asshole on Family Guy was funny, but like nowadays, it's just mean spirited yeah, and sad. But yeah. If you watch the old episodes, it's like here's Lois. She's a piano teacher. She kind of cares about her kids, and that's nice. And then now it's like she's just a nag. In one of the yeah. earlier episodes, Peter says he would take a bullet for Meg. Now, n- nowadays, not so much. He would he would shoot her himself. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I think it's happened. It was a different time. It was sad. Like, pretty much after the end of season three is where you just need to stop watching Family Guy. Yeah. It's about where the consensus is. But, uh, yeah, American Dad is good, and Francine's awesome. I like Francine. One of my favorite episodes is the whole hot tub time machine thing where they go to a hotel i think it was called fart break hotel they go to a hotel because ho- roger gassed them out of their house and then uh oh, yeah they francine plays dress up like roger does and then she gets like a whole new life and then she decides to leave her family she has like this oh for i 30 remember years. that one <laughs> And it's like Stan uh, Stan doesn't know how to put on socks, so it's like this big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um I remember the one episode of and this is like the one thing of Francine I remember is like she has this very elaborate plot to kill George Clooney. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> she snubbed him out of a role on ER. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's just like this whole like bit about like trying to seduce George Clooney so she can kill him. 
Stand guy. That's her one. one everyone gets everyone gets one kill. That's her one kill. Yeah. <laughs> One of my like favorite to... Francine quotes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite Francine quotes. I forget what episode it was, but um, she was like talking to herself in her head, and everyone's like staring at her, and she thinks, "Oh God, they're looking! Quick, say something!" And then she starts clapping, <laughs> and she thinks that wasn't saying something; that was doing something. And then she says, "Clapping." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I don't know whoever voices Francine, but she's amazing comedic timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the things are getting too spicy for the pepper. That was great too. <laughs> <laughs> what a catchphrase. I feel like that's a catchphrase that'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, you're next. Um, all right. Uh, let's see who we got here. Um, I don't know if either of you have watched The Amazing World of Gumball. I have not watched a lot of it, but what little I have seen, I do like the mom on there. Oh yeah, I have a friend. This mom is the only. <laughs> she Nicole is the only one holding that family together. Yeah, uh, I, I have a I, friend who loves Nicole. I mean, she's a cutie. I'll I'll give her that much. She's got a cute design, but I love all the clips I've seen where she just like is screaming all the time because her family is horrible. <laughs> Gumball's whole... another one of those shows I haven't seen in just forever that I really need to catch up on. Like any any clip I've seen of Gumball, it like it seems like it'd be right up my alley with its humor, but yeah, like I it's... cannot sit down and watch it. <laughs> exactly. Like the episodes I have seen are really funny and Nicole's great, but I, I don't know. I just haven't sat down and watched them all yet. The story of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna whole, say, Kyle? There's the whole anime fight scene that they did. Oh it's yeah. Oh, I I watched that yesterday because Mel had never seen it. She like I because we were going through that four chan thing and everyone was drawing uh, anime and Nicole. She's like, why is everyone keep drawing that same design? It's like, have you not seen the anime fights? <laughs> when it like even they got Studio Trigger to do that? Oh geez, did they really? I think, I think it was, was Trigger who like did that. it. That's awesome. It was either Trigger or Madhouse, but it's one of those like really well known ones, and it's like so beautiful to watch. <laughs> it was like a show on this budget should not like yeah. have a fight scene that looks this good. <laughs> it's like there's the budget. Can't do <laughs> the anything the now. The whole season. I mean, half of it's animated in Flash, but... Uh, no, I actually like this, like... I think the whole conceit of Gumball, where, like, the char- the the creator just literally took a bunch of characters that from pitched failed commercials and just stuck them in one show. That's pretty good. <laughs> and it's, like the, the, like, the entire conceit of his entire show. And it's like, that's, you know, that's really creative. Get a bunch of ideas that didn't work, stick them together, and it wor- somehow works really well. Yeah. And, like, I love the mixed media thing that they do. Like, they have to go around and, like photoshop or like photograph all these different locations from all these different angles to make it work be cohesive that's probably my favorite thing about the show is just seeing all the characters made out like just done with different art styles cgi 2d yeah like yeah like the main characters are flash like there's a cgi dinosaur that walks around they've got stop motion they've got live action they've got characters (laughs) that are meant to be like felt puppets yeah, like his neighbor are Muppets. <laughs> and like the janitor is too. Uh, I think yeah. we're Gumball's fuck. I think Gumball's we're talking about that with uh what was it? Was it the Disney stuff? We we're talking about how I didn't really like bonkers all that well because it, it still felt like cartoons in a cartoon world. Yeah, yeah, you're saying like the the humans look cartoony just as much as the cartoons do. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where like Gumball it feels like everybody's kind of a cartoon in a cartoon universe. And that's like, mm. what's great about it. There's so much yeah. difference with everybody, even style yeah, c- changes. I love that. Yeah. Cause there's, there's like no real rules to like what can and cannot exist. It's like the main character is a cat with a rabbit mom and a cat dad and a goldfish brother. And then there's like a T-Rex so and bad. a robot and a, <laughs> and a cloud person and a ghost. And it's like, you know, anything can exist in this. Yeah, world. they have a chin character. It's just a fucking chin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just put up eyeballs on a chin and that's the character. 
Imagine seeing that in real life. <laughs> oh god. I want to watch I want to watch I want to watch the like them like green screen that <laughs> have someone laying on their like on their back just like having a green screen around their face. <laughs> just film that. <laughs> oh god. But no. I like Nicole. I like I I don't know. I like the dynamic of where like the mom is like the only competent person in a family. She's got anger issues. She sure does. <laughs> She's definitely I mean, she a popular a, one these days. She She's, definitely, like, you know, knows how to sh- fire lasers out of her hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that a quality we should all look for in cartoon moms. I wish my mom could shoot lasers. Yeah. I'll tell you, That'd I'll, be cool. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. On a list of moms who can shoot lasers out of their hands, she'd probably be near the top. <laughs> I want to know that list, actually. <laughs> it's what a very, cartoon moms can shoot lasers? It's a very short list. Goku's mom could probably do that. Well, that's true. Have they ever, I don't know who Goku's mom is. Have they ever talked <laughs> about they, his parents? I think, well, they've, they've showed his dad. I think they showed his mom, but I don't think they've ever said what her name is. DBZ fans, correct me, please. Her name is just Goku's mom. Goku's yeah. mom. She's Lady, she's Lady Goku. She was Dustin. <laughs> To give birth to him. Because I, I, I forget. <laughs> they they had a whole movie about his dad, and I cannot for life me remember what his name was. I want to say it was like Bartok, but I think that's like the bat from Anastasia. <laughs> yeah, his dad Jesus was the Christ. bat from Anastasia. <laughs> was named Bartok. It was a prequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure was. And he te- he teaches Goku how to go Super Saiyan in that voice. <laughs> In his Peter Lorre voice. <laughs> his name is Bardog. That's fucking Bardog, hilarious. that's what it is. <laughs> that's it. There you go. I knew it was something like that. But, uh, yeah, I like Nicole. She's a cool character and she's a cutie. Let's put she's a one. cool cat. <laughs> she sure is. I sure like to pet that kitty. I can't. Woo! Oh <laughs> I don't want to go that. I'm not going that far. Woo! Oh, I've shit. got love in real he life. I'm good. She has a mom. Her name's like Genie or something. Oh, well, there you go. Weird. Thanks, Dragon Ball Wikipedia. <laughs> that I assume Kyle's looking at. Thanks, Google. <laughs> she cool. looks younger than him. What the fuck? <laughs> well, because they died. Oh. I guess they that's true. She, they didn't have a. She didn't have a chance to get old. She, they exploded on when the planet exploded because Freeze is an asshole. Yeah, it exploded. <laughs> then they sent Goku to Earth, where he assumed the alter alter ego of Clark Kent. Yeah, pretty much, he is Japanese Superman, <laughs> except a little less intelligent. But you know, he doesn't know how sex works. But he has like three kids. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dustin, why don't you hit us with your last one? Hmm. At least for today. <laughs> Let's see. Last one. Last one. So it's so hard to pick. I think I I'm. Know, right? I think I'm going to go with uh Sharon Marsh from South Park. There you go. And she's another one where she's pr- far from the funniest character on the show. She is kind of a kind of a nag, but I don't know. I like her. Randy. I like how <laughs> angry she gets at him. It's so great. Yep. <laughs> I mean, if you if you're married to Randy Bars, would you just not be in a constant state of being pissed off? <laughs> He's so wacky. Think, he brings that, wacky that, adventures to your household every day. <laughs> but it's like okay. I feel like Randy's just been getting progressively less intelligent over the years. Like, yeah, he started out pretty he, competent. Yeah, he was like pretty much this average man. He was a geologist, but now he's like, he has Peter Griffin syndrome where he's just like, well, in Homer Simpson too, he just like is progressively dumber over time. Yeah, but it works I will. For him. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like I will say he's at least funnier than Peter Griffin. Oh Even, yeah, I'll give I'll give it to them. Like yeah. the entire season he spent being Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I feel like they use him way too much, but he it works. It's funny. Yeah, it's it's basically a show about Randy and Cartman now. Yeah. Randy Cartman but, and Butters. <laughs> I love Butters. Yeah. I mean, you're no Bill. 
<laughs> I want them to do more stories with Sharon. They did the one where she had the shake weight. That was a good one. Uh, yeah, I I can't like like point to many storylines that involve Sharon like the, too much. There was yeah, the she's one more where of she a... was queefing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the quest. Ew, sick. <laughs> the lady for it. I was thinking of that one the other day since I had just watched um the Terrence and Philip Not Without My Anus episode. <laughs> that's one of my that's one of my favorites. Was was that the April Fools one or Yeah, that yeah, was the like... one where they said they were gonna reveal who Cartman's dad was. But then they just had a Terrence and Philip episode. It was like those season two openers. Like that could have ruined that show if that would have went badly. It almost did. I think they they said they had no plans of actually doing a part two, but then because they <laughs> had they... so many angry letters, they actually did. But, but it was like the next episode. Yeah, <laughs> like right after that, and then they retconned it. Oh did yeah, they? yeah. With episode two oh one. What? How? Wait. Who do they retcon as his dad? Though his dad was Scott Tennerman's dad. Like they're oh, siblings. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He made Scott Tennerman eat his parents. <laughs> <laughs> I like so those helpful. episodes. The two hundred and two hundred one. Do you? Is that the one where? Is that the one they were trying to show Muhammad and then Comedy Central pushed out on it? Yeah. I was, I was gonna say. Did you see the uncensored one? Um... I think you sent. I think you sent it to me where they. Wait, wait, was that the one where Kyle gives a speech and then, or is that a different episode? No, it's that one. The whole speech yeah. was censored, but um, it was uploaded. And it's ironic. It's ironic because the speech was about censorship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the uh, odds? I like oh, South Park. I like those ones since they were just um, crammed full of fan service, just like callbacks to earlier episodes all over the place. Especially yeah. for a show like South Park, which has changed so much and has like a lot of characters they never use anymore. <laughs> like they brought back Pip. I mean, Pip. He, he was killed off like immediately after they brought him back, but still. <laughs> I think Dr. Mephesto was there too. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. He hasn't been around for a long time. I, I, I don't know if we talked about it on that one episode. We like had a big discussion about South Park. But, um, I don't know, I think it's weird that, like, South Park used to be, like, this, like, just goofy episodes every week, but, like, it's, like, every episode is a social satire now. Yeah. I, I, like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, it's still funny, but I feel like I can't really go back and watch modern South Park as much, because it's, like, all those references are so very of the time that, like, they're not relevant going back and to watch them a year or two later. Yeah. I, I just like earlier South Parks because they were, like, really stupid. <laughs> Like, I feel like nowadays South Park is kind of more going for the smart humor angle, which is good. It's great. Mm -hmm. But the earlier seasons were funny because they were so stupid. <laughs> like, my, favorite it... <laughs> my favorite episode will still be the one where they just drunkenly pillaged across the United States <laughs> <laughs> doing a Civil War reenactment. Oh, man. Nice. I feel like that. I don't remember that one that much, but I remember that being one of the first episodes I saw. <laughs> it's just like the. Carmen went she's like has a bet with Stan and uh Stan and Kyle that like the South didn't win the Civil War, so he's like determined to rewrite history. <laughs> so they'll be their slaves, but at the end, like they they tell him Carmen that slavery's illegal, so they can't be a slave. <laughs> they, they kept giving them uh it was s'mores s'more schnapps. S'more schnapps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> s'mores flavor schnapps that I want I wanna taste that so bad. <laughs> I would love that. I think one of my favorite episodes is the one where um, Officer Barbrady needs to catch the person who's having sex with all the chickens. Chicken lover. Yeah, and so he has to go back to school and learn how to read. <laughs> Officer Barbrady has always been one of my favorite characters. I love his stupid uh, screaming voice. I don't know if it was this past season or the one before, but he actually had like an arc. Yeah. Where they like gave him like something to do for the first time in forever. Yeah, that was cool, but um, they didn't really follow up on it with anything. Like they kind of built up to him having some big role, but they haven't had him really do anything yet. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, because it was this whole thing about like police brutality. Yeah. How he was like shooting black. He accidentally shot a black person. <laughs> yeah. And then he like came back at the end because he's like, it was the whole thing with the ads and stuff, which he had a was a stupid, a stupid plot. 
he did have a sick dog, and it was so sad. Yeah. He's a great character. <laughs> I love Officer Bard, Brady. One of my favorite but, uh, lines of his is whenever he's like, I forget what book he's reading, but he's like tr- trying to read a book, and then he just yells out, Oh, goddamn, reading is lame. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Sharon's cool, I yeah. guess. Yeah, like, I don't know. I like her short hair. Um, I just think she's a, a cute mama. Sure. <laughs> as far as mom's made of construction papers go. I yeah. I'm, I, as cute as she can be, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's it for me. Cool. Kyle. Who's your final lady, Mama? My final one will be Batman's mom. <laughs> she, really? She died. <laughs> She's dead in a gutter somewhere. <laughs> how, how, great really a, gonna... how great a mom can you be when you're dead? It's Are you true. really going to talk about Martha Wayne? <laughs> no, but but she became the Joker in an alternate universe. There's that. Oh, yeah, and Flash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um... Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about Dustin's other one because he didn't get to say it. We'll go what? with Wanda McPherson because I just watched that show too. From Baby Ooh, uh, oh yeah, I forgot there was a show. I like that show. All of it. I, I liked it too. Stuff. It was like a show that wasn't super hilarious, but it was nice. It was a nice little show. It wasn't even too adult, yeah. really. Yeah, not really. Was that about about the time that like, fuck, what was the other show? It was like Mission Hill, Uplands. Those were kind of out at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Did did um did WB have that one about French Stewart and the devil and God and all that stuff? Uh, God, the, God devil the devil and Bub. There you go. <laughs> was that on WB too? I I think it was like CBS or something. Maybe. I could, I could okay. be wrong. JK, don't listen to me. I don't know things. <laughs> no, I, I I vaguely remember watching Baby Blues. I think it like rebroadcast on UPN later on or something. Because I remember watching it at my mom's house, but she didn't have cable, so <laughs> uh, I vaguely remember seeing it. I feel like it's really refreshing these days, especially since you have so many shows like you know Family Guy that are like really. Or South Park, like they're definitely more adult, more uh, mean spirited, I guess, which is fine. But it's nice to have a show that's a little more, uh, oh yeah, just low key, kind of quiet. It was it was pretty wholesome, like yes, yeah, exactly. Nice show. It's funny. Yeah. I, I think the creators of the comic uh, don't like the show, and I I just watched. Really? It. Yeah, I don't know why. I thought oh, it was man. nice. Well, I love the the neighbors and stuff. Those were such great characters. I love Carl, the f- fat neighbor. He's so great as a dad. <laughs> if we do a dad show, he'll be on that list. I fucking oh, love definitely. I like them uh, a lot. They're really funny, but I feel like that might have been part of the problem with the show is I feel like they were really trying to push them into the spotlight. Maybe. Because I think Cause the, like, same, the same thing happened with uh, Ninja Turtles. I think... Rocksteady and Bebop weren't part of the original thing, and they fucking hated it, the creators. But they kind of oh, really? accept it. Yeah. But they're so like integral to the to team to turtles now. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of sad. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're cool. Like, I was never a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, but like, any of my friends who are into it love them. They're my favorite. They inspire I've only, me. <laughs> I've really only watched Nickelodeon. They're very show. inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, have you watched the Nickelodeon show yet? Uh, I've been watching it race. I stopped at the one where they go in space and Raphael meets the salamander lady. That was about okay. when I stopped. Okay, then you're pretty. You're pretty far. They're TMNT, but they're in space. <laughs> There's like a half season where they go to space. <laughs> Doctor Who is a robot. He sure is. <laughs> oh, David Tennant. I hope you make a good Scrooge McDuck. Sounds oh, yeah. Good. From that one clip we've heard. <laughs> <laughs> of them singing the theme song. Sounds I'm really than hoping that's kids. good. Oh, yeah. Uh, I feel like I I'll get Danny used Poodle. to him. 
I like Danny Pooty and everything, but like I I don't think him and the other guys that uh fuck that guy from Parks and Rec whose name I can't remember. The guy who played John Ralphio. <laughs> I don't, uh, that shit. I don't know <laughs> that guy. Yeah, he was also he was also in that Randy Cunningham Ninth Grade Ninja show. I never saw that. Was that any good? I I liked it. I thought it was an interesting show. Jonan Vasquez did all the character designs. I really liked his design for the villain that I saw. So the, uh, the which thing one? With the like fish in his chest or something? Or am I thinking um, of Motor City? <laughs> Oh no the 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 one like the main bad guy has a has a mechanical hand and has a brain in his fist. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're voiced by John DiMaggio. Everybody is. I'm voiced by John, John DiMaggio. DiMaggio. All of us John are voiced DiMaggio. by John John DiMaggio. <laughs> All three of us. By my he shiny metal excellent ass. Range. <laughs> I met him last year. Was he Did cool? You? Yeah, he was pretty neat. He signed my Wait a minute. Figure, he was pretty neat. Wait a minute. You met you met John DiMaggio and you didn't Did you tell that on our show the other the other week? I didn't. God damn it, Kyle. I didn't even think about it. I met the whole cast of Futurama. <laughs> uh, and Billy West and all them? Yeah, and Marie You met God damn it, Kyle. You met the Dr. Zoidberg himself in the flesh <laughs> twice. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh my god. It did you, you guys watch the the latest Samurai Jack episode? Yeah, yes. the I love that the walrus is just really <laughs> with Zoidberg. It's just straight up Zoidberg voice. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, so here's much. part two because it's a tangent, but I went to this <laughs> sick and twisted animation festival when it was uh, for <laughs> Ren and Stimpy, John K, whatever. And one night they had John K, and he was okay, and then. They had Billy West, and I had a Zoidberg figure, and I had him sign it. So I thought that was cool. And That's awesome. Last year, I saw the whole cast because they were doing like a stand-up show or something. And then again, I had them all sign a figure, and John DiMaggio wrote "ass" on a Bender figure <laughs> on his butt. He, that's part of the catchphrase, at least. Yeah, I thought that was great. But anyways, about that show we were talking about called baby blues same, oh yeah same yeah, yeah. On adult swim that futurama was played on <laughs> oh yeah i forgot they picked that up and rebroadcast it it was fun did did adult swim just pick up every failed show from wb's animation and just re, re, rebroadcast it, it yes like it. <laughs> i think every single one of them although i think it was yeah. just those three like baby blues um mission hill and oblongs I miss Mission Hill. I love Mission Hill. <laughs> so good. I wish it would come back. Scott Menville was the best. I would say all all three of those shows were pretty good shows that could have probably gone one more season. Yeah. Did we ever say why Wanda was a good mom? <laughs> um, she's just nice. She's wholesome. She's, she's, she's a good mom. Right? She. I would say out of a lot of cartoon moms, she's probably the legit good mom. Or yeah. at least one of them. Um, she's, I buy that. But, you know, she's not that wacky. She's just a mom. She's... She's pretty level. Um, yeah. Level-headed character. In the show, they, she just had the one kid, but in the comics, I think they have, like, three now? Oh. Yeah. Their second is Hammy, the boy, and then they have a, a Ren? new baby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> Good that somebody keeps up with this. <laughs> um, I'm very up to date on my baby blues uh, Are they lore. Still writing that comic? Well, yeah, I think so. Do Heathcliff? Yeah. <laughs> do the, oh sure yeah, do. They do. <laughs> I w- oh, I will God. say, out of all the not great newspaper comics these days, Baby Blues is probably one of the few. I don't want to call it great, but I'd say it's one of the better ones. <laughs> It's enjoyable to say the least. Yeah, it, it at least gets a a, a knowing smile. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's more yeah, than it's you can good, say about a lot of newspaper comics. That's true. A good rating system. <laughs> like, hey Garfield, check out my new cell phone. I can text message now. <laughs> That's how comics oh, are Jim- now. And then Garfield oh, looks Davis. at the viewer and he's like, "Oh man, John, am I right?" And then he's like, text Megs. It's a mess. <laughs> I don't fucking know. 
I get it. <laughs> How relatable. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, I I like this show. It was fun. I just recently watched it. I think Daryl can be a pain in the ass though. Yeah. He's very overprotective. Yeah. Oh. But you know, he usually comes from a good place. A good sp- a good spot in his heart. And then Drew Carey was in an episode. <laughs> yeah. Gotta bring that up. <laughs> and it all comes you, full Kyle. circle. Yeah. I hate you so much. <laughs> he was Bitsy's new stepdad. Drew Carey. He yeah. wasn't even playing a character. He was just himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually just Drew Carey himself. Yeah. yeah. She's like, shut That's up, stupid. Drew. You're not my dad. <laughs> It had, so one stupid. Of the, it had one of the best lines. He was just like, hey, Drew. Why is the sky? Guy. <laughs> Why is the sky? What do you mean? Why is the sky? Why is it? Blue? Why is it? <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's amazing. I actually probably rewatched this show. I have not seen it since I was a kid. I think um, they actually said there was a whole second season produced that never aired. I heard that oh, too. And I'm probably will like never be Canada seen because maybe I I wish it was on DVD or something. I don't think they've like even <laughs> ever been released. But what, <sighs> I guess sad. since I don't like the show, it's just good as gone. Huh? I should do a oh, lost well. media thing with that. Totally. Oh, that's a good we'll idea. Do, we'll do that for Halloween. We'll talk about lost media. Ooh, that's a good one. Spooky, spooky. The Loch Ness monster from McDonald Land. <laughs> My that favorite. Was recently found. Oh god! I had one of those McDonald deep VHSs back. I think it was the first one. I never <laughs> saw them, was... but those those are the ones animated by Klasky Kasupo, right? Yeah, yeah, they sure are, oh, and the designs man. are awful. <laughs> As opposed to, damn, <laughs> just normally. <laughs> Anything by uh... Klasky Kasupo isn't gonna have super great designs i liked as told by ginger even though no one has a chin <laughs> uh, yeah i i'd say that's probably one of their better shows that and, like are uh, real monsters duck man like rugrats is a duck man <laughs> oh i the haven't fir- seen the- duck man everyone says it's really good oh it's fun the first season of the simpsons jason Alexander oh yeah is the best <laughs> sure. But no, first season of The Simpsons, holy shit, like playing the arcade game, it feels like such a different world. <laughs> it does. Work. I watched a, like a recent episode of The Simpsons, and by like recent I mean like whatever whenever season twenty one was. Like I think two thousand seven. Jeez. It was like the episode that had Sarah Silverman as like that girl that Bart has a crush on, and I just wanted to see what it was about. <laughs> That's like it was underwhelming. That's like every other episode is Bart right? has a crush on a new girl. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And then the random celebrity like Elon Musk, hi Simpsons family. I know you guys for some <laughs> oh, reason. Dr- That's exactly how it was. Drew Carey, like, Elon... what are you doing in Springfield? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Just so it. stupid cuz like Sarah Silverman was like the guest voice. That's fine. And then, like, Michelle Obama from fucking nowhere comes up. <laughs> Making Classic it's Simpsons actually, character. And it's not even actually Michelle Obama. It's just, like, it's Michelle Obama the character, but then he couldn't get her as a voice. I wonder why. <laughs> She's done stuff before. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I watched the first episode of The Simpsons the other day. Or not the other day, but a while back. I actually really liked I had never seen it before. The Christmas one? Yeah, the one where they get Santa's little helper. I actually really liked it a lot. It's pretty fun. There's a lot of emotional shit in the earlier seasons, and it's just not there anymore. Yeah, I hear a lot of people kind of slag off the first couple seasons. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it got good with, like, season three. But, I mean, I liked what I saw of the first two seasons. Yeah. Um, Kyle, for the longest time, has been trying to get me to watch The Simpsons because I've never really watched it in any great capacity. <laughs> but, yeah, I, like, sat down and watched, like, most of the first season. And I'm like, this actually holds up pretty well. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, honest. I've only seen, it's, like, it's a really... handful of episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen an episode here and there because I used to watch it like off and on as a kid. But like, 
Kyle is like an encyclopedia of Simpsons knowledge. <laughs> I used to draw watching it. Like, I had them all on DVD. I'd pop one in, use it as background <laughs> noise. I, I know a lot. But <laughs> I feel like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, w- Wanda McPherson. <laughs> <laughs> what a mom. My favorite, my favorite Simpsons character. That was like five minutes ago. <laughs> I know. Bringing them back around. Well, she's she's, just, all right. she, she's, oh, she's a good mom, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Alright, who the fuck am I doing for a last one here? Uh, it's all on you. Uh, Christ. Let's just go with my one of my favorite shows. I like I like Danny's mom on Danny Phantom. She's Ooh. cool. Maddie she's Fenton? a ghost hunter, and she's like the most intelligent character in that show. <laughs> And she again, I, I, I like, I know it's like really cliche, but I like the the dynamic of having the smart mom and the bumbling idiot dad. <laughs> like I don't know why, I just love that dynamic. It's so funny to me. Yeah, I I feel like it was better back. Like nowadays, it's I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, you know, at the time, it wasn't as overused as it is nowadays. Yeah. So it, it's good. Like. I, yeah, and I, I like that Danny's parents have, like, a really good relationship. Like, their job, as it is, is, like, a shared interest that they both, like, are enthusiastic about. It's not like on Bob's Burgers, where it's, like, very obviously, like, Linda kind of fell into what Bob wanted to do for a living. Yeah. But, uh, no, and, she, and she's always been really nice. She's always a really supportive mom. And, uh, I, I like I like that the bad man wanted to pork his mom. Oh, God. The bad man? <laughs> <laughs> what a crossover <laughs> if butch hartman had his way he'd do it uh no that whole like bit where vlad wanted to fuck maddie through the entire show is just like jesus christ guys he was a I get it man. but damn <laughs> he was he's creepy he's a creeper man he has but cool hair though that is true. he does have cool hair at least in like, ghost form real... yeah he's a well i think he has a cool design both in and out but you yeah know, that's true. He's a cre- he's a creeper. <laughs> I will say Danny Phantom's probably the Butch Hartman show with the best designs. Oh, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, Steven Silver helped a lot with that, so Yeah. Uh, Steven's cool. So I was thinking the other night, I don't know if it's stupid or not, but kinda like that probably. Disneyland thing I showed you, where it's like, hey, we can't do ghosts, so it's just magic. You think? Oh, yeah. You think for foreign market they retcon the whole ghost thing? Maybe. Does that make? I don't sense? know. I because I because I think the way Butch does ghosts because it's even stupid the way he explained it because it's like they're called ghosts but they're like just interdimensional monsters. They're not like actually the spirits of dead people, which is such a stupid thing. Yeah, <laughs> it would be so easy. It would make them so much more interesting if they were. Ghosts but of then dead you'd have people. to like explain the concept of death to a, to children, and I don't think Nickelodeon wants to do that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure people died on that show. I don't know if anyone's died. Even if it was think... cartoon antics, someone getting crushed by something. I don't know. I never. Really they died that with show. really cartoony sound effects. Because <laughs> Butch Hartman loves his really retarded. Uh, cartoon sound effects for everything <laughs> at least it's not every Whip single Rex. show he's done <laughs> Whip Rex for Johnny Test yeah. oh Jesus oh god uh, can I say that I really hate that um, Nickelodeon is moving its animation towards uh, like more flash based or like rigged models Oh my god, have you seen the Fairly Odd Parents done with Flash? I, oh, okay, it was weird because like I had watched like the first couple episodes of the new season just like, alright, I have not watched Fairly Odd Parents in 10 years, what it's like. It's still as mediocre as it was last time I watched it. But yeah. then I watched, as, but then Kyle showed me this clip where it looks really janky and it's like, that can't be right. So I watched an episode now, it's like, yeah, like mid-season they just changed it to this like Toon Boom rigged animation. It's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> I'm guessing it since they use Flash on Bunsen is a Beast, so they just figured, oh, we'll just do it for both shows. That's, yeah. I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, like... No one watches Fairly Odd Parents anymore anyway. 
<laughs> exactly. It's like one of those shows where it's been going on so long that like they can't really cancel it. Um, but everyone's like, surprised I, that it's still going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I kind of compare. I, I on a, a previous show, I kind of compared that like SpongeBob is the Simpsons of Nick. Fairly Odd Parents is the Family Guy of Nick. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I could good. see that. Where because. Fairly Odd Parents has this habit of making like really repetitive jokes over and over again to the point where they're not funny anymore. Well, did, um, aren't Butch Hartman and uh, Seth MacFarlane like friend? I think they worked on some cartoons together in the past. They worked on like Johnny Bravo and a lot of like early like mid '90s Hanna Barbera stuff together. Mm-hmm. They're like really. I I don't know if they're still good friends now. Um, I know the doctor on Family Guy is named after Butch. Yeah. Because he's Dr. Hartman. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, uh... Butch Hartman but yeah. sure likes pumping out those new shows for Nick. Oh, God. I Every few King. years, there's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> See, Butch Hartman is the Stephen King of Nickelodeon. <laughs> Next one's gonna be about a lamp. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I watched a few episodes of Bunsen and did not care for it at all because it's just like a lot of screaming. Yeah, I do not but, care like, for Bunsen's voice. I did not either. I just I, see it I as ne- something where it's like he's the Deus Ex Machina, where it's like, hey, yeah. look, I have this in my head. I I don't care for yeah. that. Wow, what are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sad. Like I really used to love, uh, you know fairly odd parents back in the day up until i think the channel chasers movie is about where i stopped watching it that was good i like like, channel chasers and i will slightly defend season three of danny phantom even though i know that it's not as good as the rest of the show because a lot of the people left (laughs) oh did they really yeah like half the crew left oh wow that's why it's that's why it's so awkward most of the time and i will (laughs) admit that the the final episode is really dumb oh (laughs) my god okay so (laughs) You guys know how in the last episode of Samurai Jack, they did the, you know, kind of awkward romance thing with uh, Jack and Ashi. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When I was talking to my other friend about it, like I was saying, I hate that in any show, but Danny Phantom is the one where I hate it the most with uh, Danny and Sam and their, oh man, their hands touched and then they looked away and they're blushing. Will they? Won't they? Hmm? Uh, that's yeah, a, that's a, I hate that yeah. more than anything. I yeah, I kind of that is one of the one of the cliches of cartoons that I really don't like is like you can't have a main girl character and a main guy character without them at least falling in love once. Yeah, like, I haven't watched a lot of. I, I'm really behind on Star vs. the Force of Evil, but I think that I heard that became a thing. Yeah, on there it's like really you can't just have a guy and a girl character be friends. It just like, devolves into. Totally, Platonic relationships don't exist in cartoons. Nope. <laughs> Heterosexual romantic relationships only. You need to have them hook up. Exactly. No matter so the, whether or not they have any chemistry. Right. I mean, they have to do it because then we wouldn't be talking about moms. That's true. They gotta have kids, you true. know? I guess it's true. <laughs> They're gonna bone and in the future have children. <laughs> <laughs> to their moms now but yeah maddie's cool i like that she's a ghost fighter and like has a giant bazooka all the time <laughs> <laughs> i like that she's really into her job yes i admire a woman who appreciates what she does for a living i, I like think that the... she wears a blue jumpsuit <laughs> jumpsuits yeah, are good <laughs> yeah that's another thing like she's like completely covered the entire t- like you don't even see her face most of the time she has like this hood on and goggles and stuff. You never actually see her face. It leaves even more to the imagination. Yeah. I love that they show her. And she's voiced by Kat Susie, so... I love that one. There you go. She sounds exactly like Dexter's mom. <laughs> yeah. I think... <laughs> it's just that voice she does. I think the only thing I don't care for about Maddie Fenton... And, and this is no fault of the character. It's more... Okay, so... There's like five or so cartoon moms that get drawn over and over again all over the place Mm -hmm. online and and she's one of them she's just one of the most popular ones and like that that, that's fine but i don't know it's always her dexter's mom elastigirl just over and over i i do know of elastigirl but (laughs) dexter's mom's got that rocking booty yeah 
I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I don't want them to have more art. I mean, keep it coming, but... <laughs> You Andy know. knows how to draw some booty. He do. <laughs> Extra secret. <laughs> <laughs> I like when he oh says worms God. and plastic minnows. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like how he screams best. at his dad and he like cowers away. <laughs> Don't touch anything. Get out, get out, get out. <laughs> Poor Jack Bennett. <laughs> he crawls away. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. But uh yeah, so that's that's I like Maddie. She's cool. She is. <laughs> I feel but, like um, I feel like half of this episode was talking about moms and half was talking about anything else. That is pretty how much goes. how every episode goes. <laughs> okay, good. I was feeling bad about it for a while. No, no that's, the, that's I, normal. Our, viewer, our listeners have come <laughs> to expect this from us. <laughs> It's just we can't par stay for on the topic course. for any more than a few minutes. Hey, as long, short attention spans. As long as they know to expect it by now. Yeah, we'll be, there you we'll go. be talking about Batman and then somehow get on the French Revolution and we'll be on for <laughs> like an funny. hour. <laughs> and then after that hour, we'll go back oh, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> Batman. Batman's cool. Yeah, I like Batman. <laughs> Batman's what my favorite cartoon movie. mom. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> the... the... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think that just about does it for our mom talk this week. I hope all of you enjoyed, like Dustin said, the 50% of actual mom talk we did. <laughs> and I hope you tolerated the rest. Yeah. It's... I'm sure it was an enjoyable time to <laughs> all two of our listeners. <laughs> Moms are no, fun. we love you all dearly. We love all Moms two of fun. you. And like I said, I hope you did something nice for your mom this Mother's Day. If not, we'll you come know, for you. We know where you live. We check belated, our keys. Be- belated <laughs> Mom's Day gifts are always appreciated. The fact that you cared at all. Here's here's a question. Here's a good thing to go out on. Did you guys get your moms anything for Mother's Day? Yeah, leave that in the comment. Tell us what you did nice for your mom, because we need more positivity in the world. Yeah! <laughs> what, if we've learned anything from family guys, we need to, per- like, personally not me, be assholes. Personally, like, negative $300, so my mom's probably not going to get anything. <laughs> That's fine. You could at, le- I'm sure she you could at least just call your mom. Make just her call a your mom and tell her that you love her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phone call <laughs> costs nothing. A collect call. <laughs> from jail. <laughs> I know it's Call Mother's Day, me. but if you're not too busy, would you mind maybe uh, getting me out of here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, yeah. What better way to prove what a great mom you are than to get your son out of prison? I do do some pretty underhanded stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Kyle's personal life. It's not pretty. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, that does it for this week. Dustin, thank you so much for being with us this week. This hey, you know what? Amazing. Thank, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, you're you're always welcome here, sir. Oh, it thank was a riot. You. It was great fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dustin, where can people find you on the internet? Um, they can find me at Dustin Demon on Twitter and um, Deviant Art and um. My Tumblr is, I think, Dustin's Crazy Wacky Doodles. I haven't <laughs> used it in a long time, so I, I think that's what it was called. What's the one that Dustin's smelly art? <laughs> oh, I that's the Tumblr that I use just for reblogging whatever I feel like. There you go. So you can go so to either yeah, one go... of those, whatever strikes your fancy. <laughs> if you like art, go to yeah. the first one. If you don't like art, go to the first one. If you don't like art, why are you listening to the show? Yeah, stupid. <laughs> but yeah, Dustin's cool, so go follow him. I'll put links in the description for that. Hey, you That's... know what? You guys are pretty all right, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle's a ginge and stuff, so that's... Whoa. I don't know I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Whoa. just a fact of life. Yeah, Kyle's a ginge. That's just, I'm just stating that. That's unrelated, but... To know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, alright, well, uh, thanks everyone for listening, and we will catch you next week with whatever it is we decide we're gonna do. 
Peace. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. If you like this episode, remember to share it, leave a comment, write a review, tell your mom, all that good stuff. Also, be sure to follow the show on Facebook where we post animation news and discussion topics daily. Thanks again, and we will see you in the next episode.